Hello everyone and welcome to the Let's Play of Rainbow Six Siege. In this video we will discuss how the Rainbow Six Siege is an exemplary model of its genre as well as design qualities of the game and finally talk about its business model. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege is a multiplayer first-person tactical shooter. It was released on December 1st, 2015 on PlayStation 4 Xbox One and PC. It was developed by Ubisoft Montreal and is the 13th installment in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six franchise. The game has three main game modes, Situations, Multiplayer and Terrorist Hunt. Situations is a single player mode and is used as a tutorial for the new players to get to know the game and become familiar with its main mechanics. Terrorist Hunt is a PvE mode. Although the game has single player mode, the focus of the developers was multiplayer. Currently the game features 26 multiplayer maps and 3 game modes for them. Bomb, Hostage and Secure Area. What distinguishes Rainbow Six from all other multiplayer shooters is the heavy emphasis on the environment. Almost every wall, ceiling, and floor can be destroyed and used for player advantage. The most important part of the game are operators, which are the classes of the game. The game currently has, has 38 operators, with many more to come. Attackers and defenders have different operators, with 20 for the attack side and 18 for the defense side. Even though the game has so many classes, it is very balanced because a lot of those operators are situational and can be good on certain maps and against certain enemies. Another aspect that is different from other shooters is that attackers and defenders are very different. In a typical shooter, developers try to make teams identical and maps layered symmetrical to balance it. However, in Rainbow Six, the game for the attackers is completely different than for the defenders. For example, the defenders have access to cameras that are placed on the map while attackers have two drones that they can control to survey enemy team. The game depends heavily on the teamwork and coordination. In a lot of cases, the players spend more time gathering information about the position of the enemy rather than jumping into the action that's what makes it distinct from a typical shooter. The game and motivation model for this game is social competition. If we look at the type of gamers by Bartley's taxonomy, killers will enjoy this game the most. To answer the second question, I will be using game mechanics of Rainbow Six Siege. The game multiplayer has two modes, casual and ranked and both have different rules. I will be focusing on the ranked multiplayer. Operational rules for the ranked. Two opposing teams of five players must complete the objective or destroy the enemy team to win the round. The first team to win in five rounds wins the game. At the start of the game, the players choose the spawn point. This is less important for the attackers because defenders pick the point of the objective and, and it is determined by voting. After that, players have one minute to prepare. The attackers spawn as drones and must survey the area to find the objective and to see enemy operators while defenders can reinforce the walls, put traps and choose a position. Because of the game complexity, there are a lot of advisory rules that players sh should know. For, ex for example, shotguns can break the wall, but rifles can only shoot through them. Rainbow Six also has laws that apply to eSport of the game that can be accessed on the ESL website. The space of the game is continuous and three-dimensional. There are many objects in the game, weapons, explosives, walls, drones, operators. However, I will be focusing on operators because that is the most important object in the game. The character's health is dynamic. 
Its states are alive, down, dead. The state is determined by health points. Operators also have dynamic attributes like armor and speed and are related to the operator you are playing. It is dynamic because you can increase your armor or speed with the help of other op operators' abilities. For example, Operator Rook can give you an armor increase. Each operator has also access to unique weapons and equipment. Actions of the game are almost endless. An operative action like leaning right or left can lead to resultant actions like seeing what's behind the wall or even killing your opponent. But the most important action of every operator is using special ability, which is unique to the operator. As an example, I will be using Operator Dokaibi and her ability to hack enemies' phones. Operative action using special ability leads to resultant action their phone ringing, which leads to distracting them and hearing the ringing to determine the enemy position, leading to a kill. All the three skills are important in Rainbow Six. The most important skill is the physical skill, because the game heavily relies on fast reflexes and aiming. Because it is a team-based game, it is important to have social skills to communicate with your teammates and make, make coordinated decisions and social skills can help you read your opponents and plan your moves ahead of them. Mental skills will help you analyze the situation. For example, determine the enemy team movement by looking at the cameras that they broke. Chance aspect applies only to reward system, which we will discuss in the next section. Rainbow Six Siege was not a, su was not a success at the start. When it first released in 2015, it had only 10,000 active players on Steam and slowly declining. So what made the game so popular recently, making it fifth active game on Steam and sell often over 25 million copies recently? The reason for that is the dedication of the developers. Since the release the developers were constantly adding more operators and maps with three from with free expansions it already has nine free expansion and many more to come let's examine the business model of the game we will look at the pc version of the game because the game is centered around operators developers made business model revolve around them too when you buy a game, the operators are all initially locked and you should play a game to earn credits to unlock them. The game itself costs money, however Ubisoft made a very clever move by introducing different editions of the game. The, the cheapest edition cost $15, but the price of all operators increased. In the standard edition that cost $30, you get a game and normal cost for all operators. Gold edition of the game lets you have the game and unlocks operators that will come in 2018 and cost $80. Complete edition which lets you have all the operators from 2016, 2017 and 2018 cost $120. The recent success of Rainbow Six can be explained by these additions. There are a lot of gamers that just want to start playing the game, but the launch problem was that you didn't have operators at the start and you had to pay to, and you had to play it to earn them. While with the introduction of this edition that let you have at least some of the operators at the start, it makes the game interesting from the beginning. Another aspect, aspect of the business model is loot boxes. After every match you get the chance to get loot box and after every failed attempt the chance increase by 2%. In the loot boxes you can get weapons and operator skins. 
you can also purchase credits that let you buy operators as well as in-game skins for weapons and operators and loot boxes. We can conclude that Rainbow Six Siege is a paid game with free DLC, however with microtransaction options that include pay to entertain and a bit of pay to win with the purchase of apparators. Hope you all enjoy this video.